Okay, in this video, we're going to look at three different types of forces. These are kind of the main ones. Uh, compression, tension, and shear. Now compression, as you can see in this lovely picture, is when something is being squashed. It, it is a force that acts to squash an object. This person's face is being squashed by the two hands. Okay. Um, some other examples would be um, our shoes. Shoes is a really good example too. As we walk, right, um, our shoes are being squashed, or the bottom of our shoes anyways, are being squashed um, by the weight of us bearing down and the floor kind of pushing up. Okay, so our shoes are being squashed. Um, just take a moment here and, and think about some other things that are in your room or wherever you happen to be uh, that are being compressed. Um, the second type of force is tension. And tension is a force that acts to pull an object apart. Okay, So in this picture that you're looking at, there's someone, I'm assuming that's a bungee cord, and um, uh, the bungee cord is under tension. Right, So it's attached up top and uh, the weight of the person is on the bottom and so when they, uh, when that person falls, that, that bungee cord is being stretched or pulled apart. Okay. Another one, actually this is the example that's on here, is uh, when you take your dog for a walk. Right, Your dog is pulling and you're kind of holding back so that leash is actually under tension as well because it's being pulled apart. Now this last one, shear, is sometimes a little bit confusing. Shear is a force that acts to push parts of a structure that are in contact with each other, but in opposite directions. So a couple things that you need to, to, to remember here is that they need to be in contact, and they need to be moving in opposite directions. Okay, So scissors is a really good example. One blade of the scissors is going one way, one is going the other way, but they are in contact, they are touching. Okay. Um, Another example is if you're shaving your legs or your face or whatever you happen to be shaving. Okay? That razor um, is moving past uh, across your skin. Even though your skin isn't moving, when that razor is moving across your skin, it's as if those two pieces, the razor and your skin, are going in opposite directions. Okay? So that's an example of shear as well. Um, Kids came up with some really good examples, actually, in class. Uh, this is one of my most favorite ones now. A person blinking, so their eyelid being dragged across, across the eyeball. That's also a shear force. Right? So even though the eyeball isn't moving, the, the eyelid is being pulled across the eyeball, and that is a shear force. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, um, now, those are our three main ones, so make sure you have a good idea of those and have some examples too. Um, compression failure and tension failure. Um, so with these two here, compression failure is uh, what a structure might, what we're going to consider here anyways, is what a, what a structure might look like when it begins to fail because of the amount of compression that it's under. So if you just stop right now, just pause for a second, think of if something's being squashed, what might give you clues um, to let you know that it is being squashed or compressed. So here are some things that something might look like or do. Um, might get it be bunching up, right? If something's being squashed, all that material is being pushed together. And so you're going to see little rolls. You're going to th see things bunching up. Uh, you might see things kind of bursting or cracking open because there's so much there that's being pushed together. Um, you might see some ch color changes. Actually, color changes is more so for tension failure. We'll get to that. But you can with compression as well. Um, uh, you will also hear things being squashed, right? So like if you step on a can or on a cockroach or on something, right? You can actually hear the effects of compression occurring. So those are, those are some clues. Tension failure, a lot of the similar things. Um, tension failure. Um, you're going to see something uh, get stretched out, so it's going to get thinner. Uh, you may start to see some tears. Here's where you're really going to see some color changes. Uh, that what comes to my mind is when plastic is stretched, right? When it's stretched, you really do see a difference in the color. Uh, it starts to, um, as it's being pulled apart, the pigments in the plastic also uh, get kind of spread out, so it's not as dark. It's a lot lighter in color. Um, you're also going to see uh, here some tearing as well. 
as uh, those parts get pulled apart. Okay. Now, the one thing I did want to show you is anything that is being bent. Um, and let's look at this tree branch for a, an example. But this can be anything. It can be something organic or inorganic. It could be metal. It could be something soft. Lots of things. See this tree branch, and it's being bent. right? So it's actually under tension and under compression. Can you take a look there and think, what part of this tree branch is under tension? And which part is under compression? you see right here, in this part of the branch, it's actually being pulled apart. There's a hole. You can see it a little better over here after it's been bent a little bit more, right? This implies that the stick is being pulled apart, right? It's being pulled apart. That's, what is that? That's tension, okay? It's being pulled apart. Now, if you look here, it's kind of a crappy picture. It's the only one I could find. But the material here is being kind of bunched up, right? That means material is being pushed together. And that is what? That's compression. Right? So any material that is, is being bent in any way is going to experience both tension and compression.